Hi everyone, welcome to Insider Gyan. This is a continuation of the video from yesterday where I was having a very interesting chat with Manith Gohil. He is the CEO and founder of Lalten, which is a business built on the beautiful foundation of connecting rural artisans of India to the global markets. In today's video, Manith has shared all about Lalten's journey to scaling up and has also shared how a feature in the Forbes India list of 30 under 30 brought Lalten a lot of newer opportunities. So I run a company called as Lalten. Uh, we are basically a marketplace of rural artisans and SMEs. I visited this place and I saw a group of around 56 women there uh, and they were creating handmade paper diaries. I banked there almost one year uh, of that college, traveled across the country, getting into understanding the real problem. So I didn't have a lot of money actually, honestly, because I was also a student. So by third or fourth month, while I was traveling and figuring it all of this to, to take this product to the world, I was failing in everything. And on 26th of October, it like almost took me 10 months to do this. My website was live. And it's not like every day you get a call from a CEO of an ITC, right? And he became our first mentor. He was a typical bong actually, and he was very straightforward and uh, blunt. He told that by the end of this year, if you do not have 100 B2B buyers, go back to your jobs. You're just wasting your times and opportunity to earn better. <laughs> and uh, and humne ka ki, how can he say like this? So let's uh, like honestly, that full year, uh, almost uh, for almost eight or eight months of that year since we met him. We, I, I hardly remember that we would have slept, right? Like we were working, we, we went crazy and mad. We were just going, making calls to international buyers, uh, uh, boutique owners across the globe uh, during the night uh, on Skype and uh, in the day, during the day, we were making it uh, on the streets of uh, Bangalore. Uh, and by the end of How that year, we have... How about finding these people and boutiques? Is it just by research or... Uh... Or did you have like some companies in mind who you had to reach out to? We were doing everything actually. So we, re we were reaching them on LinkedIn. We were uh, doing normal Google searches. We still had interns uh, uh, with us in colleges. So these guys uh, were creating a list of uh, boutiques in Los Angeles, list of boutiques in San Francisco, list of boutiques in Melbourne. Uh, very interestingly, we wrote down to the embassies also in India. And uh, we wrote down to all the embassies that we are a company, we are doing this. Uh, can you give a list of suppliers in your country and luck and, and we never knew that this would work right it actually worked uh, the US embassy the embassy of Peru embassy of New Zealand uh, and Australia as well so all of these countries sent a big list of boutiques and people uh, in their countries as well but I think the straight answer to that was a lot of hard work and persistence so uh, there was no plan B for us that we would fail and we'll go back to our jobs but then by the end of that year, uh, as we met all our goals, which uh, uh, Mr. Chan, the sir, uh, who was our mentor from ITC, uh, did, he said that I want to invest in your company. Uh, I think you guys can do big. So let me put a money in your company and I will want to invest. Wow. <laughs> I did. Uh, and then uh, he said, Ki, uh, what is your valuation? So we never knew what valuation is. So we just Googled Ki our valuation. Hota ke. So pata laga, it's basically the value of the company, right? So... So, and how can you estimate the value of a company? So we then discussed a lot among ourselves. We said, Kiar, let's put up a number. So we told sir, we, our valuation is uh, this many crores, right? And uh, he said, this is impossible. Your valuation cannot be this much. So, and then like, so this was like very nascent and very, uh, uh, I would say, naive or childish talks, right? And like we, and I, I, would, I would be imagining that he would be laughing in his head that uh, these guys are crazy and this just kids out of college and uh, putting a random figure out of it but yeah all of these discussions happened and uh, and we then were able to pull in a lot of uh, good investors uh, to invest into us in that first seed round right because we then thought that yeah he's investing some amount so let's uh, uh, bridge more amount and uh, so that uh, uh, we can have much if one person can do so much for us uh, beneficial so let's have good amount of people uh, good people which can bring much a lot of values right mm, yeah. uh, and the, the direct answer to that was how to find out these kind of people uh, there was no no secret sauce to it right there was no formula to this i think the only thing was how we were reaching out to our buyers uh, and that's how we were reaching out to our investors 
आंसर वॉज क्लियर की वी हैव टू फाइंड टच पीपल ऑन इंटरनेट and we have to ask them ki you need to give us money because we are growing this business and we are passionate about it every day we had to send 200 linkedin messages to rich people on linkedin right and who are the top 100 people in india or who are the top 500 investors in india stuff like that right so but you were so, mainly looking for like angel investor kind of people and not necessarily the vcs or the pe's or were you looking at them as well honestly we were looking at rich people only okay. so if <laughs> there vcs or angels or not angels who never invested but were rich also right so it can be anything and we got very fortunate that a uh, 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 lot we become very visible to a lot of good people i still remember uh, without naming that person this guy was uh, one of the richest person in the countries uh, we visited him and it was by fluke right like so we just uh, wrote a cold mail to him and his office replied to us that sir wants to meet you and uh, we cross checked it twice that is it correct and uh, <laughs> and it was correct and then uh, the the next week when he gave us time we went and met met him uh, he knew end to end about our business uh, he was around 72 20 three years of age uh, running a big conglomerate uh, billion dollar plus conglomerate right and uh, he was very quick in terms of his numbers understanding business models and everything he asked few direct questions to us in 10 minutes in on the 11th minute he told us how much money do you want to raise uh we didn't know how much we wanted to raise right like we were just blank uh, no plans nothing we were just blank so we all three co-founders looked at each other and uh, so he asked that how much money do you want from me i said, and we said that 80 lakh rupees and then he said uh, okay uh come uh, the next week and take it from me i still remember that we used to eat uh, in good restaurants while we were in flip card but uh, while we were doing uh our startup all uh, bootstrap we used to go uh and eat that dosas uh, 99 dosa varieties right like which are 60 yeah. rupees and we made sure that we had to save capital and not splurge and uh, in a in a moment uh uh he said that on the 11th minute and uh we looked at each other uh and we were scared and afraid we had never seen such a big amount uh we involuntarily rose up from our seats and uh, we had tears in our eyes and uh and he it was it was a great partnership i think and uh, he helped us a lot uh, he runs one of the biggest uh, retail brands in the country uh, he took us to international buyers uh, in uh, uk australia in germany uh, us All while you did not have a business plan and he just sort of saw potential in your idea and offered you the money i actually asked him the the next meeting which we did with him and i said that so what did you look at us like yeah. what did you find uh, interesting to put in money into our company and uh, he he told us that uh, manit uh, uh, i know how to judge people and uh, how uh, to value people and uh, i think one thing which i have seen in uh, all three of you is commitment and a lot of honesty uh, and i think that you will not do uh, bad or uh, wrong to my money and uh, i think that has been the case uh, uh, we always treated our investors money as our own money uh, though our employees do not like us uh, because we have been very frugal in many of the cases but uh, uh, but i think that's the key right uh, the yeah. key is not to splurge capital if, even if you have uh, from uh, whosoever investment or whatever investment you raise so when did you guys like how did you guys think of expanding a team uh you said that you were working with interns already but at some point you might have thought ki acha ab to matlab permanent log lane padenge right ha so uh, so we came to noida then uh, because we were safer here with our parents uh, living here and the market was also very big from delhi ncr to tab bangalore was more of tech technology enabled companies and product companies were less uh, stationed in Bang- bangalore right so while we were here uh, we had capital we rented out a small office then we started looking for people as well so we hired uh, some designers from nifts and some engineers uh, from our own alumni colleges uh, delhi college of engineering uh, who could do sales fresh graduates right so they were all young guys uh, coming in the office 22 21 years we had a team of around 8 people uh, with that fundraise uh, today we are a team of 38 people uh, growing very scalably uh, right now we have 400 retailers across 18 countries buying from us uh, With the likes of Zara, Fab India, Anita Dongre, or hotels like Hilton, Hyatt, Four Seasons, 
बॉलीवुड मूवीज लाइक यशराज फिल्म सुई धागा और ऑनलाइन मार्केट प्लेसेस लाइक पेपरफ्राई अमेजॉन फ्लिपकार्ट समर्थ बट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंगली वी हैवन एबल टू क्रिएट अ वेरी सस्टेनेबल मॉडल फॉर वन थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड ऑफ आर आर्टिस ऑल्सो एंड कनेक्ट दैम टू दीज बायर्स so how does your like supply chain work i mean uh, are you guys holding some of the inventory as well or is it direct shipped from artisans to like the stores and stuff yeah so we are a zero inventory company somi and uh, so what we do is that uh, we are a b2b company so we generate inquiries we generate around 3500 inquiries every month uh, and we give it to our artisan networks like so we have micro entrepreneurs spread across the country we give it to them and uh, these guys are connected with mobile technologies so we have given them mobile crms our own mobile phone applications so they communicate uh, with us in terms of uh, uh, what is the lead time what is the cost of this uh, inquiry and stuff so we so the micro entrepreneur is basically a villager who is living in the village who is a lalten employee so these are the guys uh, who are skilled by our teams like so these are the guys who are skilled by my design team in understanding the designs which a zara would want to implement or anita dongre would want to implement right uh, mm-hmm. and uh, these are the guys uh, uh, who are skilled by my operations team in terms of doing right quality checks uh, of an order or dispatching of an order or packaging of an order and their own house uh, becomes a small warehouse mm-hmm. while they dispatch the orders right so you said that you went and won sort of all the business uh, plan competitions right what do you think was working for you guys was it the business model was it the idea was it the team i think what has worked for us was a business idea which was running a very strong uh, confidence and credibility for ourselves as well that we have been running the business uh, and not just proving it as a model to win this competition even though it was not in papers our real competition was was with people who were executing these ideas like us and i think then also that conviction and uh, uh that perseverance to not have a plan b always and this this was a plan a for us to make it work i think it somehow reflected to the panels and helped us win mm-hmm. uh i think time and again i would say that uh, uh we have been fortunate to have a good pool of investors today uh cumulatively we have raised more than 2 million dollars and uh, not even in india but we have people in europe uh, good family offices uh, in europe and bigger foundations in us uh, and the motive for every investor is different right so so the so motive for some investors is to see growth a potential in terms of supply chain from rural to global scalability right a potential for uh, another set of investors is uh, i can say a lot of impact which is going to the community time and again when i take feedback from my investors i think and i understand how and why they invest uh, and where they invest i think they have unanimously told that they don't put money on ideas or companies right they put money on people and uh, uh, i think uh, uh, today also we share a lot of good a good rapport among all our investors we respect them a lot uh, and they also give they respect us and they also give us their time whenever we seek for right so that uh, uh, that partnership is there uh, and we have always been very selective about our investors also because like investors are like your partners whom you marry right they are not the ones who just have a fight or a divorce and then uh, you don't see each other so it's a two way street you are saying they are obviously judging you at some level but you are also sort of trying to see if you can make the partnership work and I feel like yeah, that's how it should be, right? Because it's a huge business that we are running, and no one can really be at conflict to run it successfully. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, we are also there for a long haul. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs, my friends, uh, right, and a lot of people get into startups, starting a business to minting in uh, good exits, faster moving out of to create uh, another company, and all of those stuff. I think we don't have that ideology. I think it also becomes very important in terms of what values as three co-founders we have. Our values uh, have also been always to bring, build a very strong business model, uh, a deeper one, and it takes time, right? So, so what's coming up? I mean, how do you see the business model either evolving or do you have any major plans that you can share? Uh, so I can tell you about what we have been doing actually. Uh, so. honestly the with covid uh, it feels like that we are starting lalten all of it from scratch 
right uh, literally uh, we had sleepless nights for almost a quarter uh, while the country was under lockdown because uh, uh, <clears throat> no one knew that what would happen uh, what kind of goods can be sold in market and other stuff uh, but again coming back to it that uh, we had a limited experience of growing a company right and we have always been looking up to a lot of good mentors and investors who have run successful businesses but i think uh, we're very fortunate to have good leaders who basically mentor us so like on every wednesday we still have a call uh, every fortnight with uh, this itc uh, ceo who basically helps us uh, understand uh, 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 so basically it's basically a ceo coaching right so he does coach us in terms of what to do what not to do uh, uh, and it's not about physical it's about mental it's about uh, emotional uh, uh, well being as well right uh, in these times and uh, uh, because time and again with young entrepreneurs the issue and i would be open that like with us as well as three co founders we try to get very excited on problems and jump on it and want to conquer the world very fast right but i think that's not how things work uh, definitely uh, we have been up to something uh, really amazing uh, wherein we have pivoted our entire model from offline which was predominantly my sales right i was providing my products to zara or fab india or anita dongre's grassroots tanera right this kind of brands but the offline world is pretty much suffering right now and the the entire movement is on the online world right now so so the entire uh, team has been structured to sell products online fetch fetch more of online uh, buyers globally uh, i think that was what we have been up to we are back to our pre covid numbers what we were doing in the month of february january this year uh, with the help of a very agile team right like tell us a little bit about 30 under 30 i mean i remember when i saw your name like any familiar name on that list i felt so proud so firstly a big congratulations tell us yeah. a little bit about how did that happen and did it change things for you guys so honestly it was uh, uh, one of the moments for us uh, and uh, uh, how did it happen uh, so we were Uh, reached by one of the correspondents uh, uh, from Forbes. They said that someone has recommended your uh, name uh, for this list. Uh, so what do you do and all of that stuff. The next we realized that we were on that list. Uh, uh, something interesting what happened after that was that uh, you always knew our credibility, right? But for the world, I think we become much more credible suddenly, right? Yeah. So uh, I would say it didn't help me fetch investors. uh because investors do not put money on uh pr thing or uh, whatever uh things you have been featured in right they value your businesses or as entrepreneurs more but i think uh, uh with forbes and other, uh, and the likes of the other features actually uh something interestingly what has happened is that uh, we've got a lot of buyers uh with this uh, uh attention and i still remember that one of the we have a very big buyer uh, based out of bangalore uh our list came on tuesday uh and uh, tuesday evening i got a call from someone a very senior uh from that company uh and uh, and these guys were the next morning they were on the flight and they came to our office uh, on wednesday and uh, they said that you guys are doing so awesome uh congratulations and uh, we would want to work with you guys so let's start working on it and and they immediately gave us an order of what around 38 39 lakh odd rupees uh, to begin with but at least it's right. doing the marketing for you i guess especially since you are selling it to a lot of global people like global uh, businesses i think the name of forbes has a huge sort of weight attached to it yes no definitely i think so even when we talk to our buyers in los angeles or uh, melbourne they all know what it is because this has been a global list in different countries so people are aware about it also now uh, as we are growing we are hiring more employees so uh, a lot of employees come to us uh, while we are interviewing them so they say that boss or it's been awesome that you will be working with a company where uh, uh, you guys have been featured right i think that's a proud moment as well and it helps in to uh, fetching or getting good talent from the market i think because yeah. that has also been a big challenge so demand is not a problem for me supply is not a problem for me i think getting good talent has become a, a real challenge over the last couple of quarters 
I really wanted to thank you for coming here. My like I was just noting down things and I think my takeaways have been three very key ones. One is like you guys have really persisted through the entire thing and that's why probably you are where you are. Secondly, as I'm hearing your story, I feel like you guys have been also very agile, you know, like adapting yourself to the like the business situations and the market situations be it covid or be it moving from b2b and uh, like be moving to b2b and uh, third thing i feel like what i got out of this one was getting the right mentors in the right place and keeping those uh, partnerships right so i don't no, know if you have anything to add to it or no very interestingly i think you're a management consultant who did your job uh, correct in terms <laughs> of finding the the right key things uh, i think yes uh, definitely i think persistence is very important uh, and i truly believed always that there should never be a plan b uh, for us and plan a should work yeah so but let's see how it works i think we are still early in the journey and as a small company young entrepreneurs uh, i think there's a lot to to be done yeah wishing you guys all the best i hope platinum becomes gigantic <laughs> and uh, thank you once again for sharing your very interesting story this has to be one of the most interesting discussions i have had in a long long time so much to learn about the struggles of starting your own venture and the realities that you have to deal with right i can only hope that you also enjoyed watching this video as much as i enjoyed having this conversation with manith and hope you are taking away some key learnings as well so if you like this video definitely give it a like and most importantly please subscribe to the channel because that's just going to keep motivating me to bring more of such interesting stories on this channel Thank you so much for your continuous support and I'm going to see you in the next video. Till then, bye.